What's going on, Soul Nation? Ginger Prime here, and if you've been following New World, the upcoming MMORPG from Amazon Game Studios like I have been, this last week has been a little bit strange, almost in a way like a tennis match between good and bad news. And so to catch everybody up to speed, because we have a new interview that I'd like to cover for you guys, give my thoughts and as well as my hopeful ideals of what this MMO can be for the future, let's just say it started off with one of those pieces from Bloomberg talking about kind of chaos, disruption, poor leadership in Amazon Game Studios. And this shouldn't come off as a surprise. Uh, there's a lot that that article kind of goes in detail. We're not going to fully go into it here. Uh, but at the core of it, there's a, like there's nothing's really surprising by the fact that they've launched a game, they failed, they canceled other games, and really right now the two big games that we know that they're working on, New World, which is set for a release later this year, spring 2021 is what they're targeting, and an upcoming uh, Lord of the Rings MMORPG set for some time in the future, we assume. And so as far as it goes, what is going to be the state of Amazon Game Studios? Can they pull it through? Can they fully release some new games and develop their own IP? Well, we'll have to continue to wait and see on that. However, Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, is basically stepping to the side, no longer going to be the CEO at Amazon. And the new uh, Amazon CEO uh, stepping in, uh, Andy Jesse, I believe, Jesse, uh, stepping in and then reaffirming in a leaked email that Bloomberg got their hands on, uh, in this case, that they are going to be committed to games and making games, which is a very stark contrast to what we've seen from uh, Stadia. And that's kind of the biggest disappointment of all. So at the core of it, I'm rooting for Amazon. I always root for developers. I really want game uh, makers to make great games because I think everybody wins in that case. But hopefully, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Well, hopefully they release a great one. But unfortunately, we'll still have to wait and see at the end of it. Now, having played this game and having been following this game, for a while now, I think it's only appropriate to dive into this interview, uh, giving you guys some more information about what's coming out this week. And as always, I'd love to know your thoughts. Uh, this is posted over on Reddit. I'll include a link in the description. Uh, I can't pronounce it. Urzin 6006, a new interview with Scott Lane going over plans for questing dungeons and the story, etc. So thanks for posting this. Thanks for Cerberus132 uh, for helping out with the and Der Baron for helping to translate this from GameStar. This is a German post, but essentially it has a couple of bit uh, context, almost kind of chapters you could think of. Biggest changes, quest and story, dungeons, raids, and settlements, fighting, crafting, and loot, future plans, and, and a conclusion by them. So I'll, uh, I'll just go over the highlights for you guys, and you can let me know what you're excited about, and let's just go ahead and do this. So biggest changes to New World, GameStar asks, after drastically changing your course from a PvP and survival to a classic PvE MMORPG, what has been some of the biggest improvements you made to PvE gameplay? And Scott uh, answers, he says, we've made it so many important changes. If I'd have to choose one, it would be to improve our quest system. Since the preview, we've taken the feedback to heart and added more quest types. And this is our main focus and everything is coming together right now. I think uh, one of the things that I would love to see as a part of the quest system, I don't need it fully voice acted, but I'd love it if the characters actually responded and had a unique voice, especially from a quest giver perspective. Now, that's such a minor thing. It just kind of adds a little bit overall to the touch. I'm not necessarily like super like playing this game as a questing game. My fear, personally speaking, is it just becomes a wow clone, like a you move from hub to hub to hub. I really want a sandbox or at least a sand park in a way that it has some of those elements. It's fine that it has quests. If you guys played in the preview, it's it was pretty basic. Like it was like <laughs> welcome to kindergarten questing series. Now I'd love to see some quests that build on each other. And then you have some epic chains that do cool things. Obviously I think all of us wants, you know, content to do, but at the end of the day, I'm really excited to see where this goes, especially how we can compare it from the, uh, the preview event to the beta, whenever that ends up getting announced. Anyway, moving on. Um, since some journalists and influencers have already played new world, what kind of feedback have you received and what is the most important changes that you are planning on based off this feedback? And Scott says, we've got some amazing feedback from players during the preview and alpha and we're using that to sort our priorities towards launch we're focusing on mid and end game content like the new zone reek water and we've un that they unveiled a few months ago plus more features that are just plain fun and deliver on the promise of a world to lose yourself in and we're making and we're working on more game modes landmass ai variations weapon types and more so honestly i would say 
obviously the questions talking about journalists and influencers, and I'm going to focus in on influencers. I, Hey, I don't like the term. I know people label me with that. I understand. Uh, it makes sense from kind of a nuanced perspective, but at the core of it, I don't, hopefully they're not just listening to YouTubers. Hopefully they're not just listening to streamers and content creators. Uh, there is a, um, kind of a clear difference sometimes in terms of playability and how a content creator approaches a game versus just somebody who's just there to play and have fun. So I hope that it's not just journalists and influencers are the only people who have their ear. I, I'm not going to say that you shouldn't listen to them because, you know, streaming games has a ma massive impact and appeal and draw. And we see that time and time again. Uh, but hopefully that's not the only source of information that they're getting. So that's just my note on that one. All right. What can we uh, expect from the quest and the story? Um, that's what they're asking. What kind of mechanics are they going to look like? And Scott says, we don't want to spoil the surprise, but quest variety and the depth of the interactions during the quest are some thing that they put a lot of effort into. And that said, quests will get more exploration, discovery and integration, even some scripted events. And we also want to add more quests that the main story continues into the end game after the Azoth story. So that's exciting to see. Now, GameStar asks, how is the new world story going? Is it more of a support and exploring of the game, or does it dive deeper into a player into a linear fashion? Something like we see from Final Fantasy XIV, for example. Scott says, Our New World Experience team loves to tell the story of Eternum visually, and there are clues about the world and its history scattered around the world itself. For example, looking carefully at the statues and the ships, we want to expand on this in the future. We will also support it with lore pages that tell the story of the areas in detail as my voice cracks, for everyone who likes and or to read deeper into the lore. All right, so what about dungeons, raids, and settlements? Group dungeons and raids are some of the most iconic features of classic PvE MMORPGs. New World appears without this mechanic in the traditional sense. How will the game compensate for this, and will there uh, be an end game? What will the end game look like? And Scott says, after the preview, we made it clear that we would concentrate more on the mid and end game, so we'll have more to say about this very soon. Personally speaking, I really love open world content. I, I That's just where my bias is. I can understand the value of instanced. It just feels like over the last decade, everything's kind of gone into this instance mindset and less about this open world, this big world of hundreds of players playing all at the same time in the same area. Now, that all being said, I would love to see something of this nature. I just don't think a game needs to only focus in on that. However, I think if New World added that kind of content, I would absolutely take part into it. I just hope that they have, if they do decide to do any instancing, ultimately that there is uh, kind of counterparts in the real open world itself. Like if they have open world dungeons, that would be cool. The way that the world is set up and how big it is, I think it lends itself to have some kind of discovery mechanic for these dungeons themselves. Now that's just my two cents. We'll have to wait and see what they have to say, because when he says we'll have more to say on it very soon, that could go either way. The answer could be like, yeah, we're not working on that at all. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Would you love to see dungeons, raids, things like that in the game itself? Let me know. All right. Uh, GameStar asks, New World has a ve is very dependent on active guilds to conquer and manage cities. This is true. Uh, is there a mechanic that will prevent a city from being run by an inactive leader for too long? And Scott says, the system itself does it. Settlements will be run, uh, settlements run by inactive companies are taken. Likewise, well and fairly run settlements will receive the support of the players, and we can already see that in the alpha. Now, GameStar says, how big is the New World map compared to other open worlds? And Scott says, a tournament is set in an alternative history of Earth, and it's a magical, so we don't really know how big it is. I guess you'll have to find out for yourself. I guess they're kind of more or less asking, how big is the map ultimately going to be? And it just means that we're going to keep building this if people keep playing it, so they can expand because of its magical lore nature and forward into that. Anyway, all right, let's talk about fighting, crafting, and loot. Uh, fighting feels very powerful, but many players complain about the overly strict animation locks. Do you plan to continue using feedback to make the combat system even more fluid? And Scott says, we've made numerous improvements of the combat system since the preview, and we're going to keep improving the battles as long as New World exists. All right, GameStar says, uh, can you get strong equipment without crafting, or is self-crafted equipment significantly better than loot? Scott says, in New World, you can get equally powerful gear through crafting and adventure. The equipment has different strengths, values, but it's equally powerful. My hope is that we don't see everything transition to a drop loot game. Uh, and what that means is that I think one of the things that helps um, games 
live, especially in that sandbox nature, is a constant value to your actions. If there's cra if crafting is is needed, then there's a value in doing that. But the, that drive there's a big market force in things. Like if there's a, a an enemy out there. And the question is, like, why should I go kill that enemy? I'm not going to get enough experience or whatever. But if they have a chance to drop an item that a crafter needs that can craft something epic that they can set, like, there ends up always kind of being some kind of demand. And you, the player, are participating in that as an economy in and of itself. Now, um, everybody has different experiences with MMOs. That was kind of my entry point. And the fact that we've seen so little... Uh, open, you know, like uh, player driven economies and, and these kind of games can be a little bit frustrating, personally speaking. But yeah, we'll see. Well, <laughs> I'll let you guys know updated thoughts if we end up seeing them change that. All right. Um, GameStar asks, can you uh, get, nope, that's the same question, blah, blah, blah. All right. New World's future plans. How do you want to establish New World alongside big MMOs and the MMORPGs like WoW? Scott says, action based combat system is the greatest innovation that we've got. In the new world, you play offensively and defensively, and your position and timing play a role. Their action combat system is not only works for 1v1, but scales up to 50v50. In addition to the struggles, they think that their setting in and then the art style also sets them apart. There are some uh, of the ways that New World is different from traditional MMOs, but we will also have the some deep mechanics that MMO players love, like character progression, long-term persistent worlds, robust crafting, and player-driven economics. I think those are real key aspects to the life of the game, assuming they're obviously players dig in and have fun with the game itself. Now, GameStar says, uh, what is your vision for new, of New World in three years? And Scott says, wow, what a great question. Uh, we talk a lot about that without going into too much detail, but we, uh, we build a big, beautiful, and yet scary world in which you can lose yourself. Not only because it's large, but because of the range of activities and the challenge of exploring into the deep lore. When I play New World, whether I'm fishing in a remote part of the world, harvesting herbs, or fighting in the Great War, it takes me to a faraway place. The vision is to add more of that and to create new and unique experiences for players. So GameStar says, what are your plans for 21, uh, 2021 after the release? And Scott says, New World is a live game. We'll be adding new content and features all the time. I can't get into specifics yet, but I want to stay close to that rhythm that we had during the alpha. So more weapons, more opponents, more activities, simply just more. And that kind of finishes up the, obviously, the interview section in this case. I want more weapons. I want more activities. I want uh, a lot for this game. And what I experienced in the preview has me excited. If you guys haven't heard or seen any other of my New World content here on the channel, um, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out for this video. Hopefully you hit that subscribe button. YouTube says I, I'm not really great at telling you. And I'm losing my voice for some reason. <clears throat> yep, there we go. Gonna sleep on coffee. Oh yeah, only the top top quality content here. Um, that being said, like I, I showed this to my wife, let her play the preview, and she said, "Buy this game for me." And so one of the things I know that we've got on our table is we're going to be playing New World together. I remember, and I've been itching to dive back in. I love the preview. The preview wasn't perfect. The preview was like, yeah, like the game, like if you're going to put your best foot forward, it's important that you put your best foot forward. And when you play in the preview, it's like, there's definitely things that if they add and change and fix, I think will go a long way. And that will help attract a lot of people to the game itself. At the end of it, New World, Blue Protocol, Final Fantasy 14 6.0, World of Warcraft, like there's some really great games and I'm enjoying playing. And I'm going to continue to play. That's the whole point of this is to have fun playing games and have conversations around them. So hopefully you found this information uh, inf informational and <laughs> informative. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I do apologize for my blubs and uh, flubs, but uh, that is the way it goes. Uh, if you guys are still here at the time of this, uh, I do want to say uh, tomorrow, uh, Friday, the the 5th in this case, we're going to be doing a live reaction to the 14 6.0 or whatever they're announcing uh, showcase. And that's going to be happening around 7 p.m. Central over at Work to Game. Uh, the links and all that should be in the description of this video. Hopefully you guys come either hang out with us live for that or I'll see you on my next live stream. Either way, thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys have an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. But until then, take care. This video is sponsored by me, Ginger Prime. Hopefully you'll check out my podcast channel, Ginger Gaming Radio, which we have lots of guests, lots of great conversations, and even more highlights. Links are in the description below. Let me know what you think. Thanks.